Pacific, when Pearl Harbor was being bombed, I was boarding a ship for the Philippine Islands. I returned back to the States, had some training, and I was in France when the Battle of the Bowl was occurring. I was in two theaters of war. Thank you. Yeah, my name's Richard Island. I uh, entered into the Marine Corps in 1947 after high school. I, uh, I stayed in for over four years. I was getting out after three, and uh, I was at Quantico, Virginia, and uh, too many gave me an extra year, so, so I was in there. And the Cold War. When I was in uh, during the Cold War, uh, out of uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, after doing about 90 days straight messing as chief messman, and uh, the CO asked me, uh, geez, you did a lot of mess time. I said, yeah, they got, I kept telling them I wanted to go to Shanghai. Shanghai, I want to be a Shanghai Marine in China. I never got it each time he told me another 30 days. You're only supposed to get 30 days a year. I ended up with 90 days, and, and then I went to heavy equipment school and all that. So I was in for the first year. It was a little rough, so I was over in 48, 49. It's the intention for the Marine Corps in the United Nations. But we were military observer. With a diplomatic passport, which I still have today. And uh, right now I'm with AMVETS. volunteering at the USO over here, but my wife got sick, so last year I, I uh, took a big absence, so that's about it, I go to Miles here, which I'm happy, but thanks a lot. A year and a half later, I was commissioned a second lieutenant, and I served a year in El Paso, Texas, and Fort Bliss. Then I went to Korea for 13 months and spent uh, a lot time on the DMZ. My name is Kenneth Radnitzer. I went into the U.S. Marine Corps in 1944. I was in the invasion of Okinawa. I spent 82 days on that island. And when I got through, through in the Marine Corps, I went to school and I went to an ROTC commission. And I went to, as soon as I graduated, they nailed me. And I went to Korea for 82, uh, for, no, for about eight months. And I served there. And uh, <clears throat> I uh, then went home and I served in the reserve for about 24 years. Zapel. I was in the uh, Navy Air Corps in World War II, uh, flying anti-submarine patrol in the Atlantic and the Pacific. Uh, it's an uh, anti-submarine patrol convoy escort and air sea rescue.
is Kenneth Lee. They joined in Amy. I was 17, right out of high school in 1944. I served as the follow-up of the Navy uh, for officers. They taken into colleges. I became a midshipman in 45. Stationed at, at Purdue University in the Wharton School of Business. At that time, they didn't know what to do with us, so they, uh, I enlisted for four years, but uh, they, they let us out in 1946. When Korea came, uh, they drafted all the ones that went into the Navy Reserve in 46, and we went into the Army. And that is the basic training at uh, Camp Breckenridge under the 104th Airborne Division, transferred to Fort Lawton in Seattle, Washington, <coughs> and uh, came corporal and served at Fort Lawton, sending troops to Japan and the dependents and troops up to Alaska. And I was transferred to Fort Lewis, where I was discharged in 1953. Uh, I went into the Army Reserve, so my entire service was from 17 until I was 30 years old. And uh, fortunately, I uh, didn't have to go into the next war. My name is Judith Carlson. With the permission and encouragement of the powers that be for this project, I am representing my late father. I interviewed him. He was Army towards the end of World War II. He was asked to enlist uh, because he spoke Yiddish. They turned his Yiddish into German. He went into Germany as a spy. Uh, after World War II, he remained in the Cold War and he was instrumental or participated in getting some crown jewels out from behind the wall after the wall went up. Uh, there are a couple of books uh, denoting that, unfortunately. None of those books mention anybody by name, and that includes my father. I'm Betty Horseman. I'm representing my husband, who passed away two weeks to the day after he was interviewed. He was in Africa, Sicily, Italy, Germany, France. He went in as a sergeant, no, he went in as a private. He made it to sergeant, went AWOL a few times. He bounced back from sergeant to private. I'm tremendously proud of him. I am Betty Horseman. I met my husband in a bar. <laughs> Not in war. After the war at the American Legion. Along with my class of 32, we all went into service from Mayo. The two that couldn't go in were Dominican nuns. All of us went into service. I asked to stay in the United States. Fine, they kept me here for three months. I spent the next three years in the South Pacific in Guam and Saipan. I treated Italian prisoners in Guam and Japanese prisoners of war in Saipan. I saw my first female patient four years after I graduated. I loved my time in the service and I'd do it again. I'm Charles Metz, United States Marine Corps. I'm not going to come up here and say I did this, I did that, I did this. I want to tell you something I, what I remember. I remember Sunday, December the 7th, the four years of war. I remember all the boys we lost, all the men, all went into the arms of our Lord. I remember the guys coming back with no arms, no legs. I remember that. I remember the boys that come back, their, blood, their, their minds were destroyed. I remember the men that come back, they had no hope. They were in despair. Oh, I remember. Oh, how I remember. But you know what? It's something I want to forget. My name is Sam 
checked her. I was in uh, Korea early uh, 1951. Uh, I was an um, electrician. I was a mechanic. I was a truck driver. And uh, it was an outfit similar to if anybody ever watched MASH on TV, uh, that kind of an outfit. And uh, we used to get the wounded right off the front line. And I'd have to uh, participate sometime in hauling the uh, wounded and the, uh, the dead out of uh, trucks into the tents for the doctors to work on. And uh, I'll never forget arms and legs hanging by a piece of skin. And that uh, pretty much uh, what I did and saw when I was in Korea. Thank you. My name is Irv Abramson. I was 17 years old in 1943. Uh, Uncle Sam said if I enlisted in the Army, they would pay for my college education, which uh, sounded like a tremendous deal because I didn't know how I'd get that education. Otherwise, uh, I did enlist, went through basic training, was eventually assigned to the 100th Combat Infantry Division. Uh, we went uh, across the Atlantic, landed in southern France about uh, six weeks after the Normandy invasion. Uh, the 100th fought through France, Germany, finally wound up in Belgium, and uh, where I was seriously wounded in the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, I remember my 10 days in a MASH hospital uh, they were doing tremendous work putting soldiers together with the meager supplies they had. Uh, it was not, of course, the, they didn't have the advantage of a general hospital, so they were putting uh, the poor wounded, uh, including myself, together with rubber bands, paper clips, and scotch tape, whatever they could get their hands on. But they did save my life, and uh, I. Uh, uh, I thank the Lord that I'm here uh, at uh, the age of uh, 89 uh, to be able to talk about it. Um, my wife in the purple in the first row just celebrated our 67th wedding anniversary. She says, uh, I only went through one more, she went through two. <laughs> My name is Dr. Irwin Wolliger. I volunteered after I finished my medical training and uh, volunteered for the Air Force. And uh, I eventually went to the African campaign. Uh, we were the only Americans in the desert. And so we were attached to the uh, British 8th Army General Montgomery. I was a senior flight surgeon for a heavy bomb group of uh, B-24s and B-17s. And our only mission was to bomb things that contained fuel so Rommel could move his equipment. And that eventually won the war. And when that was over, I went through uh, the uh, European uh, uh, war, and uh, I was a uh, mass unit uh, that uh, serviced General Patton uh, uh, for his medical problem. And believe me, if we had more generals like him, we wouldn't have any wars. See, destroyed everything. My name is Don Spitzer. Uh, I enlisted in the Air Force in 1942. I had 100 hours of flying, and I was eliminated from the Air Force because we didn't fly for two weeks, and I lost all my ability. 
to fly. But I ended up in China, in the Flying Tigers in Intelligence, and then transferred to India, where I, I, I was the B-24 outfit, was brought the gasoline to the uh, flyers. My name is Matthew Wojtasek, U.S. Army. I served with the 82nd Airborne Division from 1942 to 1945. I was a glider trooper, and I saw action in North Africa, Sicily, Italy, France, Holland, Belgium, and the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, come January, I'll be 93 years old. Thank you. from Fort Sam Houston and sending them to Korea. They were taking the other half and they went to Vietnam. So um, I'm glad to be here. Uh, and uh, I did want to mention that Mike Lake served in the same division as I did about the same time. So thank you very much. Hi, good morning. I am Dick Fanna. I volunteered for the Marine Raiders and they rewarded me with a 27-month vacation in the Pacific, <laughs> starting at New Caledonia, <coughs> Emeru, nine weeks in the hospital at New Hebrides, back to Guadalcanal, a short brief stay at Kwajalein, Guam, where I was wounded. There was a bullet burst my helmet, tore up the side of my head, and. They put me aboard ship and sent me back to action the next day. Then to Okinawa, and finally in Japan. But I, like my friend here said, what I remember most are the guys that didn't make it. Medal of Honor, Dick Bush, Silver Star, posthumous winners, Fred Aerosmith. Bruno Orvaletti, L. Dreis, where Roy Godwin, Jimmy Hart, Fred Aerosmith again. Those are what we remember today. And I appreciate the fact that you came here to see us. And thank you so much. Hi, my name is Dr. Farrell, and I served with U.S. Forces in Austria in World War II. <laughs> I 
I'm Bill Zip. I live in Niles. I served in the U.S. Army and was in the Heavy Weapons Department. I was the first gunner on the machine gun because nobody else wanted the job. I found out that I always was in the first row. Nobody was ahead of me. And I got awards for the Battle of the Bulge in Central Europe and Germany. And the biggest thing was that if uh, I eventually met my wife, and my wife is a army nurse, and she's going to tell you her story and maybe a little bit more about us. two months ago today. We were together 62 years and he was 93 years old. Walter served in the U.S. Army in the infantry at Normandy and six months in combat in Europe. <coughs> and I would like to thank those today for letting us come today. And I salute the Veterans Administration who did so much for Walter and also for all the veterans who came home and for those who did not. Thank you. My name is Felix Priola. I served during the Korean conflict from 1950 to 1953. And I made it out okay. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We thank you. 